Hello and welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Cork Express. My name is Martin Turner. Today we're going to be talking about anchoring in text. Now, before we go any further, I need to uh, just explain that there are two kinds of anchors uh, in Quark Express. So we've got what we're going to talk about today, which is pasting into text uh, and call out anchors. We've got another kind of anchor, which you find uh, in uh, style, uh, anchor, new, and that is for uh, uh, anchor, uh, that is for referencing within text. Um, okay, we've already got one of that name because I already made one earlier. Uh, we're not talking about those today. What we're talking about is the call out anchors and the paste in text. Okay, with that explained, um, the simplest kind of anchoring in text. So anchoring in text is where you have something which moves with the text. You, you're well used to this in Microsoft Word. That's the way that word processes work by default. You, you paste something in or you import it and it moves with the text. Uh, in Quark Express and desktop publishing applications in general, you import something and it stays where you left it because that's much more useful. And uh, one of the reasons why uh, Word uh, extended Word documents go horribly wrong is because stuff is moving around all the time and eventually the computer crashes. Now, uh, there is a risk of that with Quark Express if, if you give far too many commands and overload, but it's actually pretty good at instead of uh, looping around uh, when you tell it to do something impossible, for example, put something in the margins, not in the margins, it's possible to tell it to do that. What Quark Express will do is it will show you a red traffic light rather than looping forever trying to do that. Do it in Word and you'll find that the system just shuts down. Well, okay, the simplest way uh, of uh, getting something uh, into the text is simply to paste it there. So let's just delete that one. Uh, and uh, we're going to create a space for it. We're gonna create a new uh, table there, uh, three by three. Uh, sorry, not three by three, three by five. Uh, and I'm just gonna uh, command X, control X on a PC to, to cut it. And I'm gonna command V, control V on a PC uh, to paste it. And that will behave just like um, a piece of text. So if I now go to uh, the bottom here, uh, center, it'll center it, I can write text it. Uh, justifying it is not going to do uh, a great deal, um, but it works in that way. And here I've got one which is the size of a character which I've pasted in, uh, uh, which is uh, just basically acting like a character, except I've got a shadow in there. So if you want to have some shadowed text, uh, in the middle of regular text, you can actually achieve it in that way. Though, of course, you can't paste it as text. You're gonna to have to paste it as some kind of box of text. But that's all well and good. But what if you wanna have some text uh, between the lines, as I've got over here? Or what if you wanna have a, a, a marker outside the line, uh, as I've got here? For that, we're going to use call-out anchors. So let's go to F7. Um, on the keyboard, and you'll see uh, that I've already created a call-out anchor here. And I'm just going to, um, uh, I think we'll delete that call-out for now. Uh, so uh, we'll get rid of that. Uh, and we'll also, uh, I think, delete, whoops, delete the text by accident. Um, I can never remember how to do these things. Uh, call-out anchor, oh, delete, yeah. So we'll go on there, click, you see a little pencil comes up, I don't know if you can see that, a little pencil comes up, and I'm gonna to go to call that anchor, uh, delete. Now, what I've got now is I'm gonna just create this yellow thing again. Uh, we'll give that the yellow color we had before, we like that yellow, uh, and it's like a marker on in the side. And uh, so uh, I go into my text, and I'm going to do uh, item call out anchor, insert call out anchor. Now on a Mac, I've actually defined a hotkey to do that because if I'm doing this a lot, it's quite convenient. So I've, I've made the uh, uh, command um, uh, acute, uh, so grav accent, uh, which is not used very often, certainly not command grav accent, and any hotkeys that use that, to be uh, this. Now I've created therefore a call out anchor, uh, and I'm now going to go to call out anchor Oh, just click on here first. 
I'm going to go to call that anchor again. I'm going to do associate with call that anchor. And again, I've got a hotkey for that on my Mac. Now, uh, you might say, well, well so what? Um, how is that better? In fact, it's not even moving. Well, no, it won't move. A call out anchor uh, stays where it's put until you put it on a different page um, uh, where you can see there what's just happened, it's moved the page, but it stays put as much as possible until you give it a call out anchor style. Now, these are over here um, uh, and uh, you see, I've already defined a few of them. So uh, I'm just gonna call this one, um, I'm gonna click on here, uh, and I'm gonna give it paragraph marker. And that means it's gonna move it uh, next to the text. Let's have a look at that. So uh, call out styles is in window call out styles. Uh, and I'm gonna edit that one. And I've called it paragraph marker, I can get name whatever I want. A line call out horizontally, a line call out vertically. So in this case, I've got paragraph for both, and I've got the right edge of the paragraph aligns with the left edge, so a right edge of the call out box aligns with the left edge of the paragraph. Uh, I've given an offset of one millimeter, which you can see uh, down here, just to make it look not too cheap. And then I'm aligning the call out vertically relative to the paragraph, align the call out's top edge with the top edge of the paragraph, so that's here. So those match up, no offset. I'm going to allow manual positioning of call out, but crucially, I'm not doing keep within margins. In fact, I've defined it to be outside the margin. If you make keep within margins, it will either disappear or give you a red traffic light. Let's try that. So keep within margins, uh, no, it's, uh, it's moved it inside the margin, uh, and it won't allow me to take outside the margin. Look at that, I'm trying to try and move it in, it won't do it. Let's go back here uh, and uh, turn that off. Uh, so I give it the instruction to be outside the margin, but I've told this, this overrides. Now, um, let's just, uh, okay, option click that to apply it properly. And there we are. Okay, in this case, I've also got one pasted um, uh, in the, uh, like here, I pasted one in, but this one is a call out anchor. Uh, and uh, what have I got here? Uh, let's have a look. So I just need to find uh, that. Uh, it will remain clicked on the previous call out anchor. Let's see, tell it otherwise. So I'm now clicking on there. The little red things come up. You can see that. So the like, little arrow came up or a little, little uh, pencil. And now I've got the in text call out marker. The in text, uh, a line call out horizontally relative to the anchor itself. So with my anchor character. Uh, a line call out's left edge with anchor position. Yes, we can see that. Uh, no offset. And then I'm going to align vertically anchor and a line call out's bottom edge with a text baseline offset 0.2 millimeters. Keep within margins. No manual positioning. So uh, let's now look at this. If I click on here, I cannot move that. Or at least if I try, well, it did allow it. Did I just change that? Um, uh, yeah, it's locked now. Um, so uh, no manual positioning, it, it, it automatically applies the lock to it. I don't have to lock it, and I can't unlock it without going back to that. Now what about this in between the line? Well, let's click on here now. Again, uh, I'm gonna use, uh, come right in so you can see it, uh, and I'm gonna click on that marker, and you can see my little arrow thing comes up, my pencil, uh, and that's now got red. And in this case, I've got between text. So um, come out again. Uh, let's just zoom in on that, shall we? Um, let's see what we're doing. So uh, look at that one. A line call out's left edge with anchor position, minus one millimeter, so it's moved across one millimeter. A line call out vertically relative to the anchor, yes. A line call out's top edge to the text baseline, no offset. If I give it an offset of one millimeter, uh, then it'll be way too much. So let's give it um, an offset of uh, two points. I can just type in any units I want. Uh, even that's gonna to be too much. So I'm gonna give it uh, one point. Um, uh, and that's like that, probably still too much. I'm gonna go back to what I had before, which was an offset of zero. Okay, what else can we do? Well, um, 
What about this one? You, you use this, I use this a lot. Um, uh, I, I like to have summaries in the paragraph. And so uh, I, I want to be able to put my, put my summary mark anywhere in the paragraph because I might change the text later on. Uh, and in this case, uh, again, let's click on that, otherwise we're still on the previous one. Uh, and it's paragraph summary. Uh, this time, a line call out's left edge to the right edge of uh, the box. I'm aligning to the box or cell. Um, so I'm aligning to here. This is the box. This is my call out. Um, and uh, I'm going to use the right edge of my box. I'm going to have an offset of eight millimeters, which is exactly the width of my columns. Uh, and again, I'm going to top edge a paragraph, no offset. Uh, don't keep within margins on this one. It's outside the margin, otherwise it will go wrong. Okay, uh, and uh, if we come back out, if I now uh, go uh, down here, uh, you'll see uh, that moves with the paragraph. Uh, but if I were to um, uh, add in, uh, uh, add in some more text here, and this moves onto the next line, uh, it still stays with the paragraph. Um, yeah. Okay, what else can we do? We've got some fun things here. Um, so let's look at this one, uh, where I have now uh, decided uh, to, um, okay, I don't know what happened to those, I must have deleted them. So what I'm going to do is, I've got trim view turned on here, so that's turned on, and I've got these, uh, these things that, um, let's come right in there, uh, I've got these lines which I want to uh, line up with the paragraph to kind of create a kind of nice effect. Okay, what's going on here? Uh, I think we will call it anchor, uh, delete, uh, call it anchor, uh, yeah, um, let's insert a new one. Uh, so call it anchor, insert, call that anchor, um, and now, whoops, um, I didn't want to do that. Uh, uh, and now call that anchor, um, I'm using the contextual menu now, associate with call out anchor. And the same for this one. So um, call out anchor, uh, insert call out anchor. And now I'm going to actually use my hotkey to connect that up. And I'm now going to call that line procedure. And that one line procedure as well. So what's happening here uh, is that I've got the line procedure is very interesting, very easy rather, but the line follower, um, this one, click on that, thank you, um, is lines up at the right edge of the paragraph plus one millimeter and then stays in line. So that, that kind of just moves around with that. Now that's a bit of an effect, I quite like that. Turn the trim view on and you'll see the way that that works uh, and off we go. But it's all very useful. Um, but what else can this do for us? Well, let's imagine we're working with a grid and we've got a load of uh, illustrations which must go uh, in one of the nine grid spaces. So we, we, the illustrations are going to be the right size, we've got an item style for that, but they've got to go in the grid spaces or else on my grid uh, occupying a bleed position uh, which still fits in with the grid. Now, uh, I've got here a, um, uh, a few uh, gridded, um, not that one because it's already in use, um, gridded uh, places these can go. And all that's happening, um, again, right top, it's already in use, um, is that I'm clicking on different ones of these uh, and uh, it's just been specified. So in this case, a line call that's right edge to right margin, uh, page center, center of margin, uh, zero millimeters, because in fact, my grid works out that way. If you've got a more complicated grid, you might need to do more things. Um, you can do right edge, left edge, uh, or center. 
inside or outside edge. This is a not a facing page, so you cannot have things which use inside and outside uh, with a, 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 something with no facing page. So it, it's got to match the layout you're using. So that's just something to be, something to be aware of. And again, a relative page, I can be uh, center, top edge, bottom edge, uh, with the center of the margin and so on. And those page functions are very easy to lead. Now, come down to here. Uh, and we've got, again, uh, in this particular case, let's go to that one. Uh, remember, you've got to click on the actual uh, marker, otherwise you're working on a different one. You can move things around. And I've, I can put it, I can bleed it one way or the other way. Now, let's turn the trim view off for a second. You can see I've got uh, this bleed uh, down here, so it's bleeding correctly. Um, but if you're doing a, a long document or a magazine where everything has got to be exactly right, oops, didn't want that, um, uh, and working again and again, these call-out styles are amazingly useful uh, and will serve you very well indeed. Uh, if we um, get to the point where uh, we've, we've created something which is now impossible, Um, uh, so that isn't impossible. So uh, what we'll actually see uh, if we create a, 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 as you can see, it's not getting confused with this. Um, if, this if this was Word, then the whole document would have kind of broken down by now. But these things are still working even though we're moving stuff around. It will slow you down a bit. So if you're doing uh, a long document, get the text right uh, first, um, and after that, after you've got the text right, uh, that's the time to then uh, start putting all your callouts in. And what I often do is I populate the document with the graphics and then come back and do callouts later on, depending on what kind of document it is and what kind of deadlines I'm working to. But working to horrendous deadlines where everything has got to be exactly right, uh, callout anchors, are much, much more powerful than simple paste-in anchors. Uh, they're very reliable, they're very robust. You, your document will not go uh, all funny like they do in Word, uh, and you will save yourself a huge amount of time uh, in addition to uh, being able to do uh, these kinds of things, which are more kind of fancy uh, features where you might not use them very often, but when you do use them, uh, they're very useful indeed. Um, Managing any kind of big document, if you're not currently using uh, this feature, I would suggest that uh, it's um, probably uh, time to start uh, because for a long document, very useful indeed. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Martin Turner, author of Desktop Publishing uh, with Cork Express 2017. Please do get a copy of the book if you haven't already got it. Uh, talk to you next time. Uh, in the meantime, happy Cork.